1 Corinthians chapter 1 My name is Paul. The ministry of Jesus Christ is the mandate of my life according to God's delightful purpose. Brother Sothenes is my colleague. The Mirror Translation He was formerly the chief ruler of the synagogue at Corinth. I addressed this writing to the Ecclesia of God in Corinth. You have been restored to the harmony of your original design, made holy in Christ Jesus. No wonder then that you are sure named saints. You are in association with all those who have discovered their true identity in Jesus Christ. Everywhere, in every location, he is the head of this union. His name relates to us to one another in a global family. Grace and peace is your portion from God, who is our Father, and from his executive, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace express the sum total of every beneficial purpose of God towards us. Paul brands his gospel with these words in order to distinguish the message of the revelation of the finished work of Christ as the basis to our faith from the law of Moses, which restricted a person to their own efforts to justify themselves. It is a matter of grace versus reward and peace versus striving. I am always so happy for you when I consider how greatly advantaged you are because of God's grace unveiled in Jesus Christ. Your knowledge of Christ is based on so much more than hearsay. Every aspect of your life gives eloquent expression to the rich reservoir of your union in Him. You certainly have the testimony of Christ evidenced in you. In receiving the revelation of Jesus Christ as the principal influence in your life, you prove that you lack nothing and that His grace gifts fully complement you. He establishes you from start to finish to stand vindicated in your identity in the light of day as evidenced in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are sure named by God. This is our true lineage. He is faithful and fully persuaded about our joint participation in the fellowship of sonship. We are included in everything that our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father enjoys. God's faithfulness is the basis of his union. Friends, because we are sure named and identified in the name of our Master, Jesus Christ, I urge you to speak with one voice. We share the same source as our reference. The idea of division is an illusion. We are a perfect match, accurately joined in the same thought and communicating the same resolve. Some of the believers in Cleo's fellowship told me about the controversy in your ranks. This is most disturbing. When I was told that you are divided into groups where some side with Paul and others with Apollos, still others with Cephas, and even some who say we are the messianic group. This is really ridiculous. Can Christ be cut up into little relics? Was, Christ, was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized into Paul's name? Baptism is not my business or emphasis. I am glad that I only baptized Crispus and Gaius amongst you. I distanced myself from the idea of employing baptism as a means of branding my ministry with my name. Somehow, baptism has become a snare to some who wish to win members to their denomination. Oh yes, now I remember that I also baptized the family of Stephanus. My mandate, mandate was not about winning members for some Christian club through baptism. 
I am commissioned to declare the good news without any strings attached. Nothing to distract from the powerful effect of the revelation of the cross of Christ. To their own loss, the message of the cross seems foolish to some. But to us who discover our salvation there, it is the dynamic of God. Isaiah wrote, I will confuse the wisdom of the so-called wise and prove their experts wrong. God's wisdom puts the rest out of business. They have all closed shop. The philosophers, the academics, the smooth talkers, the lot. By suspicious scrutiny, the sense-ruled world surveys the works of God in creation and still do not recognize or acknowledge him. In sharp contrast to this, the foolishness of the message we proclaim brings God's work of redeeming his image in us into faith's focus. The Jews crave signs while the Greeks revel in philosophical debate. The crucified Christ is the message we publicly proclaim to the disgust of the Jews while the Greeks think we are wacky. The dynamic of God's wisdom is the fact that both Jew and Greek are equally included and defined in Christ. It seems so foolish that God should die mankind's death on the cross. It seems so weak of God to suffer such insult. Yet their wisest schemes and most powerful displays of genius cannot even begin to comprehend or compete with God in his weakest moment on the cross. You might as well admit it. My friends, it was not your academic qualifications or your good looks or social connections that influenced God to represent you in Christ. It is almost as if God deliberately handpicked the wacky of this world to embarrass the wise, the rejects to put to shame the noble, the ones with no pedigree of any prominence, the nobodies in society attracted God's initiative to unveil his blueprint opinion in order to redefine mankind. Thus, he rendered any other social standard entirely irrelevant, redundant, and inappropriate. Every reason for someone's boasting in themselves dwindles into insignificance before God. Of God's doing, we are in Christ. He is both the genesis and genius of our wisdom, a wisdom that reveals how righteous, sanctified, and redeemed we already are in him. He is our claim to fame.